I warn you right up front, this video sucks. There is no way to talk about what I want to share today and give you the information in a way that you can use it either to learn something or as ammunition in the constant fight against bad internet advice. There's no way to do that without a bunch of boring text. So we'll get into that in a minute. The short summary here is that I see a lot of people asking, how do I exercise my bus? What do I do while I'm building my bus? And you don't want to start your bus conversion, your schoolie build, your ambulance conversion, and then let that rig sit for a year without touching it. You want to keep the batteries charged up. You want to keep the tires round. Uh, you want to keep things lubricated. And so it's good to exercise your bus, regularly take it out and drive it. But I see people in response to that suggesting that owners should start their bus and idle it every week. And that's actually the wrong thing to do if you read all the information that I could find from the manufacturers and the experts. So do you drive your bus? Yeah. I mean, driving it moves it. It heats up the engine. It gets the fluids in the transmission and your engine moving. And that's good. But the thought that you have to circulate the coolant in order to avoid uh, loss of O-rings or something is just wrong. Now you've got O-rings and your shock absorbers and there are pistons. You've got a piston and the shaft. It's good to move that. Uh, drive your bus, get that moving up and down. Your tires will eventually develop flat spots on them. So roll your tires. But parking your bus and idling it every week for a couple minutes is a bad thing to do. And I think I'm going to show you why. So today let's talk about how do you properly exercise your bus engine? All right, I've got my reading glasses on and we are ready to rock and roll the boring part. So today we're talking about bad internet advice. Say it ain't so, imagine that. Anyway, somebody had asked about how do they do pre-trip inspections and maintain their bus while they're working on it. And I'm not picking on this particular person, but this is a very typical comment advice that they should make sure to start the bus for a few minutes at least every week to let the fluid cycle through. And I think you will see by the end of this that that is the wrong advice for a lot of different reasons. Those include increased wear because every time you start the engine you are wearing it some and so you want to minimize the number of times you do a, a start, especially a dry start. Um, you don't get rid of the moisture in the engine if you don't heat it up enough to get rid of the moisture in the acids that build up in the engine. And the cool engine lets, lets fuel condense on the walls of the cylinder and it causes some issues there. So anyway, there are a bunch of different reasons, but let's see what the bus manufacturers have to say about it. And unfortunately, they say very little. I think part of the reason for that is they don't expect that a bus is going to sit there for a year, so they don't give much guidance on that. But what I did find is a good manufacturer-provided description of engine issues, especially injector failure uh, and poor injector performance, because of deposits. And one of the things that they noted was deposits outside on the outside of the injector are generally caused by incomplete incompletely burned fuel that builds up around the injector holes and we'll talk more about coking here in a bit but this can cause issues related to you know poor fuel combustion poor performance a loss of power loss of fuel economy we'll talk about why that fuel might not completely burn here later Another thing I found was a manufacturer's Q&A about a symptom. So you have no response or low RPM. Um, and this is in relationship to specifically turbochargers and the variable geometry turbochargers. But one of the reasons they give for that was lack of exercise, lack of wide open throttle or spirited driving. And what that does, or extensive idling, and what that does is it leads to soot and carbon buildup, and that can be a problem. 
So what about diesel engines that really do sit for a long time and then start up intermittently? Those really define or describe how diesel generators, commercial diesel generators are used. So let's talk about those because there is good guidance from the manufacturers of diesel generators and those engines about how to exercise them. So they talk about sitting there in standby. One of the things to note is you should exercise the generator at least once a month. And that's not a bad idea. I am not saying don't start your bus and drive it, but they say start it and exercise it at least 30 minutes loaded to no less than one third of the nameplate rating. So that is not idling. Again, we're gonna go into this later, but if you are just idling the engine, it's not going to heat up to proper operating temperature. So what is wet stacking? Well, we're gonna momentarily go to Wikipedia. Now, normally I wouldn't use Wikipedia to define woman or a lot of other things, but in this case, it provides a pretty good definition of wet stacking. And wet stacking is a condition in diesel en engines in which unburnt fuel passes on into the exhaust system, the stack. And it can have several causes, but the most common cause is idling the engine for long intervals, which does not generate enough heat in the cylinder for a complete burn. So anyway, this is worth reading. I would encourage you to. I'm not going to go through all of this, but that's what wet stacking is. So what causes wet stacking? And these are from diesel generator manufacturer's sites. When the diesel engine is operated at light lows, it doesn't attain the designated operating temperature. Operating below the designated oper operating temperature for long periods of time is what results in wet stacking. So anyway, again, a good description here. You can pause this and read it if you want. So what is coking? Coking is another term really uh, very similar to wet stacking. It's deposits left in the exhaust system of diesel engines. So you'll see coking and wet stacking used interchangeably, but it's caused by insufficient warm up of the engine. And again, or short engine runtime. Those are both things that are exactly what that person was describing was a good thing to do in your engine. And here the diesel manufacturer is specifically saying, don't do this. So coking deposits in diesel engines are usually a buildup of unburned fuel or oil in the exhaust system. It can be caused by poor fuel quality, overfueling, idling for excessive periods of time low engine operating temperatures. So all of these things happen if you just idle the engine for a few minutes. So there's a lot of good stuff to read here. The kind of problems it'll cause to your EGR system, to your turbocharger, build up on the intake and exhaust valves, creating a lack of power, smoking, surging, uh, check engine light might come on, all kinds of things. So here's a manufacturer's guidance on exercising their diesel generator set because they have to be able to go from cold start to operational very quickly. And your diesel engine really is, is designed and good at doing that. There's no reason to sit there and let it idle for 20 minutes in the morning to try to build up heat and warm the engine. Idle it just long enough to build up air pressure and then go drive it under load. So anyway, they, may, they recommend that the generator be exercised at least once a month for a minimum of 30 minutes loaded or no less than one third of the nameplate rating. Periods of no load operation should be held to a minimum because unburnt fuel tends to accumulate, accumulate in the exhaust system. Again, they're saying run it and warm it up. If you don't address wet stacking at minimum maintenance intervals, unburnt fuel will begin to build up in your exhaust system. It can clog your injectors, decrease your generator or your bus's performance. They can create back pressure, erode the surface of your engine, all scary stuff. Anyway, uh, oh, wet stacking can also affect your oil quality, and that's because the unburnt fuel will seep down past the rings. Your diesel oil, diesel fuel is really an oil, and it's thinner than your oil. It will seep down into the, the crankcase and thin out your oil. And then you end up with low oil pressure because your oil is thinner than it's supposed to be. You might see 
power production reduction even before your engine shows any external signs of damage. So these are all side effects of wet stacking that you want to avoid. So one of the diesel manufacturers, this is actually Caterpillar. This is from the Caterpillar site. They talk about low load management. So what that is, is they're talking about how do you properly manage a generator that is run under low load, just like you would be doing to your engine if you left it idling in your driveway for a few minutes. So anyway, they can operate at light loads for long periods of time with no harmful effects, yes, but after operation at low load levels, they, you'll see that the, their performance can be impacted. So they should operate under increased load to raise cylinder temperature and pressure, which cleans the deposits from the combustion chamber. If low load operation is expected to occur regularly, a more aggressive maintenance plan will help ensure there's no excessive component wear. In other words, if you're going to sit there and idle your bus in the driveway like that, you've got to do more maintenance, not less. And that's exactly, I think, opposite of what people are trying to accomplish by well-intentioned starting their bus and just letting it idle. So anyway, the first major consideration in managing a low load is how to avoid, how to add a load to a system. So these are generators. They're talking about plugging things in so the generator's under load. In your case, that would be driving it. And this is the NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association, and they have guidelines for generators. And they say, yes, 30 minutes monthly, but you have to load it. So build it up to operating temperatures. And uh, anyway, sorry, I'm sorry. Maintain the minimum exhaust gas temperatures, EGR or EGT, um, as recommended by the manufacturer, and run it for 30% load at least for generally 30 minutes or, or more. Well, let's turn to the world of aviation. And I've owned a couple aircraft. I've been a pilot for a long time. And one of the things I initially thought was, if my airplane is sitting in the hangar, especially in the winter, I thought that it was a good idea to do what they call a ground run. Pull the airplane out of the hangar, maybe once a month, start up the engine and let it run so that you can circulate all the fluids and everything. And I learned pretty quickly from my mechanic uh, that that was not the right thing to do. And investigating it, I realized I was wrong. And here is Lycoming, one of the major aircraft engine manufacturers. And they say some operators are running the engines on the ground in an attempt to prevent rust between infrequent flights. Here's the important part. This may harm rather than help the engine if the oil temperature is not brought up to approximately 165 degrees because water and acids from combustion will accumulate in the engine oil. The best way to get the engine up to temperature is to fly the aircraft. So go fly your bus. Anyway, uh, if the engine is merely ground run, the water accumulated in the oil will gradually turn to acid. So what happens is if you start your bus and you idle it for a few minutes, you're going to have water condensation in the engine. And if you warm the engine up a little bit, but don't heat it up enough to evaporate all that moisture out, then as soon as you shut the engine off, that water that water in the air is going to condense into the engine. And anyway, prolonged ground running in an attempt. So they're talking about, you know, trying then to just run your engine really fast. And that doesn't work well on an aircraft and it doesn't work well on your bus either. Here's another thing, ground running your engine, again, this is idling the aircraft engine, but it applies to your bus, is not good for it. The objective is to get the oil hot enough to boil off any acidic water created by exhaust gas blow by, and you will have some of that. So they say you should get the oil temp up to 180 degrees, 180 degrees. Fly the airplane, fly your bus. Here's another one. Get the engine to, or the engine oil to normal operating temperature. If you don't get the oil up to normal operating temperature long enough, you may wind up doing more harm than good. Should you ground run? And this was a question, and they said, are, are you tempted to make tracks to the airport? Because they say, you know, letting the engine sit for a long time isn't good for it. But are you tempted to run to the airport and fire up your engine for a few minutes of ground running? Well, no, it won't get hot enough to do much good. In fact, it might do more damage than good. 
And again, they quote Lycoming, the engine manufacturer, that says you should fly your bus <laughs> for at least an hour and get the temperature up to 165 to 200 degrees for uh, an hour. Well, let's see what they talk about in the marine world, because marine diesel engines, and they're very similar. In fact, a lot of them are the same, just marinized versions of your bus engine. What do they say? So this was one of the articles. It was a really good one about myths. It's okay to let your diesel engine idle for extended periods of time because it burns so little fuel, and that is wrong. So... Uh, they say this one's not restricted to mariners. I've seen a lot of diesel pickups uh, leave the engines running. Truckers sometimes, but that's to keep the fuel from getting too cold in the winter and gelling. Anyway, letting your diesel idle for anything more than a short duration is a bad idea. And they're talking about that startup. Uh, the fuel it does burn will not combust completely because the operating temperature is too low. And then they talk about that. So, plus every time a piston travels up and down, the rings and cylinder walls wear just a little bit. If your engine is not hot enough, then the pistons and the rings won't expand properly. And you're actually going to potentially increase the wear, but increase the passage, the ability of the fuel to pass down into the crankcase. Let's look real quickly at an online article I found that's really good. And I will link to that down below. Mariners talking about how to properly care for their marine diesel engines and it's entitled appropriately why you should never idle your Detroit diesel engine. Now they don't say never idle it. In fact, they talk about when it's appropriate to do so, but they do point out that a lot of boaters have bad engine idling habits and that they waste fuel and actually can cause damage to the engines or at least reduce performance to their engines by letting them idle. So that cool engine uh, doesn't allow the fuel, the diesel, to combust properly. So you're wasting fuel, and that unburnt fuel can also leak past the rings down into the crankcase. They talk about the increased pollution that this puts into the environment. Again, these are boats, so they're spewing it into the water itself. But the pollutants caused by the unburnt fuel and the unburnt fuel itself seep past the piston rings when not combusted. Over time, this will cause the engine to smoke more as oil viscosity is reduced. That's what I was talking about, or I'm going to here shortly. Uh, and you can even see a low oil pressure because you end up with diesel in your engine oil. And idling does not warm up the engine, and that's an important part here. So again, if you're idling your engine in the driveway, it's not going to heat up properly. All right, let's go back to the boring stuff. Here's another marine site. Don't let the engine idle for excessively long periods, long periods of idling. Now they're talking about a boat and it's fairly common for mariners, boat operators to start up their engine before they leave the dock and let it run for 30 minutes or so. But there are several articles in the marine world about that being a bad thing. So it causes carbon to clog the injector spray holes and piston rings. It can cause valves to stick. So if the engine coolant temperature becomes too low, again, they're talking about somebody's cruising along on their boat and they then stop and let it idle. Once that coolant temperature drops and the engine temperature drops, now they've got raw fuel. The same thing that will happen if you just start up your bus and idle it in your driveway. They have raw fuel washing the lubricating wall off or the lubricating oil off the cylinder walls and diluting the crankcase oil. And one last one again from the world of marine diesel operation. So other problems when the engine doesn't run with enough load, which is what happens when you idle it in your driveway. Rings around each piston fit tightly against the cylinder walls and they contain the pressure from each compression stroke. They rely on heat to expand properly. Lightly loaded engines may not heat up enough to seal the rings, allowing unburnt fuel past the rings and into the oil pan, where the diluted acidic mixture can lead to internal corrosion and loss of oil lubricity. Anyway, and I like this, they cite a senior program engineer at the American Petroleum Institute 
and they suggest that they should bring the oil temperature up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit and that causes the moisture in the oil to evaporate. On a lightly loaded engine, what that advice was on Facebook, a lightly loaded engine, your diesel just idling, the engine oil may not come up to this temperature, leaving moisture in the oil that could harm internal components. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me to the bitter end. If you see somebody posting, telling new bus owners they should idle their engine for a couple minutes every week, uh, send them this video and make them suffer through just like you did. Thanks for being here. Appreciate your support as always. Be safe.